You're looking at the work of Jeremiah Eldridge. He's a professor at Ohio University, and he's done many fabulous things here. Now, if that's getting heavy, Jim, you can put it down. We just wanted to show yeah, a little no, bit no. about your work. Is that a little bit heavy? No, not, not at all. But these are the figures. Now, you've done a gorgeous mural here. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Now, how big is this mural? Uh, oh, you need that kind of thing, the statistics. Well, <laughs> let's see. As I recall, something like, uh, I don't know, I've forgotten. But 30 big. by 40, something like that, yeah. Yeah, I wish we could see it, but they have a lot of scaffolding and whatnot up there. Yeah, right now. Mm -hmm. But now tell me, how long did it take to do the, the mural? Oh, gosh, another one of those things. That's about, uh, <laughs> altogether, I suspect, about uh, seven, eight weeks, something like that, eh? Mm -hmm. I was asking Jim, I said, how long have you been in Ohio? You, he said, nine years. And then before that, he taught at the University of Michigan. And oh, well. he was a football player up there, but I thought, you look like a student. Uh, let's see, what's it got to do with my hair? <laughs> <laughs> I've forgotten. You just combed it, can't do a thing with it? Jim, um, tell me a little bit about murals. Now, um, how difficult is it to paint a mural? Oh, not, uh, there's no difficulty at all. My, uh, let's see, I, I work in extremes. Either these, this is about the limit, uh, any more in, in, in terms of size or scale. This, a very discreet thing. In fact, uh, the things I'm doing now are miniatures, they qualify. About that big at the most. Either that as one limit or, uh, or the mural. And the mural is, uh, oh, it's an athletic thing. It's, you know, kinesthetic. You just move along and let it come out. Uh, no, through the fingertips. And the other thing is, uh, it's, uh, it's more a matter of, uh, like, fixing on the paper and, uh, oh, you know, being, becoming tranquilized, in a sense, eh? And uh, the thing still feeds out of the end of the pen, if it's the pen I'm working with, and that's pretty much, uh, uh, that's the tool almost exclusively now that I'm uh, working with. And it's, uh, it's, it's more like a, a vision. I don't mind using that word. Embarrassing sometimes. A vision. No, no. You've got uh, this, this book here, The Vision of Galaganuzi. Galaganuzi, yeah. Uh, what does that mean? I'd like mean? to know about yeah. the word. Let's see now. I'm not sure that I could... Oh, yeah. First of all, it derives from uh, Blake. It's his term. He's, I'm appropriating it uh, from him. And uh, I don't know that... Well, let's see. People have made an effort to... Uh, you know, analyze it and give it some meaning other than that which is implicit in his writings. And I haven't come up with much better than they've uh, managed to do, but, uh, oh, maybe these as a possibility. Golganus, uh, Golganus is like a, or Golgotha, or Golgotha, or Golgotha, take your choice. Oh. It's like the uh, place of the skulls outside the wall, and it's like ooze, which is slime, and it's like, I don't uh, like that. primordial, and uh, it has to do with, like, evolution and our coming out you know, from that beginning. And besides that, it sounds nice. It's almost, it, it, it's almost typical, it seems to me, to uh, Appalachia. Uh, the place I live is called the Golden News Asylum. And only because it's, uh, oh, only because, I guess. What and, about uh, the city of love, Nat? There's something about that. Yeah, that's it. Uh, it's like the two extremes. If we talk, oh, here's a better, here's a good example. I'm working, let's see, the image or the vision and the word are, uh, I guess, my concern. And the hope is that the uh, the words and the images are congruent or somehow, uh, uh, or like contiguous, or they uh, they're out of the same. They come. They come from the same impulse or the same whatever you might like to call it, like inspiration. Well, this is the foot's weight. That's right. The foot's weight and the way it makes connection through the head that trod it. And uh, so we have two extremes there again. We got the head and the foot. And there's something. Uh, oh, maybe the easiest way to explain that would be to refer to uh, the Chinese concept of, uh, of the cosmos. And there's a word which uh, sums it all up. It's called Dao, or T-A-O, Dao. Dao, and uh, that character, to start with, depicted uh, a head severed and a left foot. That's the lowest part. It has to be a left foot, the lowest part of the body. And the Dao means way, how you progress through this world, how you make your way, and how you maybe finally attain human distinction, let's call it that. Eh? The human aim, then. But it's an aimless sort of thing. You don't shoot at it directly using just mentality, nor do you just uh, idle your way through, you know, just sort of uh, walking uh, walking along. It's a two-in combination. And so, oh, excuse me. I did something I didn't. No, I? no, no. Well, anyway, in between, in between is, how, is, is how the connection is made, the midriff area. Uh, and the waist is coming back. We're going to find out more about this. We have to do a commercial. You it's know what it. commercials are, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then we'll be right back, okay? Mm -hmm. 
Tim Eldridge, we were talking about the midriff. Midriff, yeah. yeah. So it's right in the middle someplace. It's like median, it's moderation, it's the golden mean and all the rest. And it has to do with golden news, too. There's uh, Blake, Blake Positions' golden news. It's a city of love, ever building, in sort of a mid veil. It's a floating world. He calls it Beulah Land. And in Beulah Land is golden news. And what it, what it amounts to is this. There's something, if we want to use these terms, subjective and there's something objective. And what is subjective is always manifesting itself. That makes the, uh, that becoming ex exteriorized or externalized, becoming gradually then and increasingly accessible to the senses. And uh, if, you, if you're up in that veil, that mid-drift area, where that's imagination. There's another term for it, the nation of images, the nation of images. Uh, that's where the mind and the foot, the two extremes then, are in sort of a fusion. You can just occupy yourself up there and stay there, as the psychedelic people would do it, getting on to the drugs. Well, now, how about the psychedelic look? How about that on, on the campus? Oh. What do you have to say about that? Well, it has to do with, let's see, what does it amount to mostly? Psyche, or psyche, that's the soul. I don't know what the delic means, but it has something to do with probably with uh, expansiveness, and that's probably what it amounts to, consciousness, expansion. But does that have anything to do with the hippies? Oh, yes. The hippies are, are like flower children, of course, and they're... Uh, they would, they would believe that they, the ultimate power is love. And, uh, of course, love is a flower, but uh, to stay up in that mid-realm means to be, like, idle and, uh, you know, uh, yeah, that's good enough, idle, and uh, not uh, committed to any action or any changing of environment. Uh, eventually, maybe the flower will fruit, which is something else again. I maybe said a, a bit back about how uh, these visions have a way of manifesting themselves. Vision manifests itself here in this painting for me, or this drawing. Uh, and it might be that uh, these people who have experienced, uh, oh, don't call them hallucinations because that makes them sound uh, too demented, you know, too insane, too far from the norm. It would seem to me that the norm might be that which, once again, moderates between extremes. That's, you know, too much mentality, too much you know, uh, reason or uh, rationality. Too much mentality. Or the other thing, the how, the guy on the road, the guy, you know, sort of living out his life, the, what do you call him, existentialist, who just uh, has things happen to them, to him, then as it would. But in between is, uh, is, uh, is the realm of belief and the realm of, uh, of possibility. Possibilities for what? Well, like making for the ultimate utopia, you know, the city of love on this earth. All visionaries have that as the... Uh, Held that is, or saw that is the final prospect. The city of God, uh, Saint Augustine, and uh, all the other utopians you can, uh, utopias you can, you know, you could, uh, you could, you could tally up. Uh, oh, one of the psychedelic uh, fellows came down to look at the mural. This is by way of anecdote. Uh, he said he'd acid head. That's what they called him, right? He said he was on. Uh, he'd taken a trip, and he didn't know whether the mural was really before he'd taken uh, his dose or whatever it is they take uh, that good or not. But under the influence, he sat there, and he said before very long, well, he vomited. That's what he did. And that was proof to him that it wasn't any good. That was last year. But they've grown up since then. There was a group down the other the other day, and they said they were too, you know, under the influence or whatever it is. Huh? And they were watching it, and that thing just sort of swam away with them, it said. Mm -hmm. They said, the group. They were, they were unified. It swam, swam away with them. And there's a guy, uh, another one. Well, these are all tender people. Charming people, uh, docile people, pacifists, not in any militant sense. Uh, oh, yes, he took away from uh, the mural the motto above the doorway. Every threshold has to have a warning. And the motto there, as I recall, is, uh, oh, and I did it because there's something over at the green here which says, enters that thou mayest every day increase in wisdom, morality, and knowledge. Nowhere have they mentioned intuition or the other, you know, facets that have to be included to make for Let's call it sagacity, which is like the city of sagas, eh? Golgan is the city of love again. Anyway, he took the motto off, and he made his own inscription of it, and he looks at it every night. That's his object of fixation, you might say. And it's beginning to turn him on, he says, more than his, uh, you know, regular doses, whatever they take, you know, sugar cubes or what. And the motto goes like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as, as the Rolling Stone brought death, off into the mountain, and returning from the interminable foundations of the rabbit hole, will it bring again the glow of flesh, which is love, the glow of flesh? You know, Jim Eldridge, we're all out of time. We are. I don't know whether I've understood all this, but I've had fun. Thank you so very much for visiting with us and showing us it's your my work. Fun.
Uh, we will. It's been funny. We enjoyed it very, very, very <laughs> much. And I know why you're so popular down here at Ohio University with the students. We'll be back down and visit with you again. I thank you so much. What? Right.